Hi traders, happy Tuesday. I'm hoping everyone enjoyed their Memorial Day weekend if you happen to celebrate that holiday. And if you don't, at least I'm hoping you enjoyed your four day weekend. We are raring to go to start another dynamic week of trading and I thought it would be a great idea to sort of walk you through my morning, especially a morning that starts off a week with my traders. So I will be spending this morning with three groups of traders. I'll be spending my opening morning with my IFT Black team members. I will also be spending time with recent graduates of my live trading camp, which was formerly called um, Trade the Open Like a Boss, so my recent boss graduates. And later in the morning, I'll be spending some time with my mentorship traders or students, as it were. It's always interesting to start the week here. I'll log into the rooms where my various traders are. I thought it'd be interesting to show you how my morning starts here. So what you're looking at is a variety of different rooms that we use for training purposes. And so as you can see, there's Spanish rooms, there's there's Brazilian rooms for my Brazilian traders. We have trading kids room for my for the 30 plus traders currently involved in my trading kids program. I have a private mentorship room here. I'll be going into the workshop room here right now. You'll see there's 16 people pending, waiting for me to enter. Now, the numbers as we approach the open will certainly surge. Uh, we usually have anywhere between, oh, it depends on the day, 50 to 300 traders on hand during their sessions with me. But it does depend on the day. Right now, we have uh, 18, including me, and they'll be waiting for the market to open, and I will help them walk through their morning with their trading, answering their questions, um, monitoring their trades, pointing out trades, showing them what I'm doing. We have a great time off the open every time we get together. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch my program. I'll minimize this. Now, one of the one of the most frequently asked questions I get is, Oliver, what trading platform do you and your traders use? For the last 10 plus years, I've used an institutional platform called Fusion. You'll see it here on the left-hand side of my screen. This is not a platform that is a regular retail-based platform. It's not readily accessible to traders who have regular accounts at, at regular brokerage firms. It's, a, it's an institutional platform. It's a platform that is specifically directed toward proprietary traders. So this company that the company that owns Fusion licenses the product to institutional firms like mine. And so I lease the product for my traders. All right, so Fusion, it's special in that it, it is a platform that places a high degree of importance on execution. When you become a size trader, an institutional professional trader, all the bells and whistles that you find on a lot of the retail-based brokerage firm, brokerage platforms, they become less and less important. What colors the charts are and how the GUI looks on the platform. And almost everything starts to revolve in, in terms of importance around the executions. And Fusion has lightning speed executions. I have multiple execution routes to go through. I also have access to what is called dark pools of liquidity. Those are some very sophisticated ways to get executed. So what I'll do is I'll connect to Fusion right now. And there's my account. I'll put my password in here. And we'll get this platform, this bad boy, fired up. Now, what you're looking at right now is my command center, but it's my laptop command center. And probably the second most 
frequently asked question I get regarding my trading is, Oliver, why do you trade off of a laptop? Because most people have seen pictures on Instagram and 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 promotions by so-called big giant traders with these huge monstrosities. They have 14, 16, 18 monitors giving them radiation poisoning, and they look very professional and sophisticated. Well, I left that kind of trading in that world well over a decade ago, and I've been trading solidly virtually every single day of my life on a laptop because I want to be as mobile as possible, and this is what I encourage to all of my traders to do. I want to be in business no matter where I go and no matter where I am in the world, and I can't do that with a big, giant desktop system. So if I go to the beach, I want to be in business if I want to trade. If I go to a very nice hotel or a nice resort or a mountaintop, if I'm on a plane with Wi-Fi service, if I go on vacation with my family, I, I need that 15, 20, 30 minutes off the open to do my thing and I am done and finished. So I think that mobility today is far greater than computing power. And technology has brought us to the point where you simply don't need a, a huge amount of computing power to do sophisticated professional trading. And trust me, guys, I trade millions upon millions upon millions of shares every single week of my life from this laptop computer. So you're looking at my laptop layout where I have various charts. I have a list of stocks on the left-hand side. I can toggle between different time frames here. I can execute off of my level two, which you see here, okay? And I will typically have displayed all of the key stocks that I focus on for trades right off the open. I don't toggle back and forth like this. You won't really see me flipping back and forth unless I'm doing this for the sake of my traders. What I will tend to do is have everything open that I focus on. So if I focus on Apple, it will be here. I focus on Facebook here, Baba here. I'll focus on Square here. I might focus on Twitter or JD here and Microsoft or PayPal down in the lower left hand corner. And so I won't toggle back and forth. I'll just be watching the movements of my key stocks simultaneously waiting for any one of them to step up to the plate and say, Oliver, 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 me, 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 I've given you what you want. And this is what I teach my traders to do, to wait for what you want, for, to wait for what you know. Don't search, you wait. Now, as you can see in the center of my screen is probably the most important box of all. This is where all the money is. Now, what you can see very clearly is I'm trading with a $2.5 million trading account. Now, I used to trade with an $80 million trading account back in the, in the Wall Street days, but today I trade between a $2 million and $5 million account. Now, what I do, guys, I start off every single year with a $2 million account. And as I grow my profit base, as I gradually increase profitability, I do not withdraw profits until the end of the year. I withdraw profits out of my account once a year, usually toward the end of the year or the very beginning of the year. And I go down to baseline. My baseline size is $2 million. Now, throughout the year, as I build profits on top of that $2 million, that $2 million in buying power, I will inch the, the account up. So now you can see I'm up from 2 million to 2 million 500,000. Maybe in another month, month and a half, that'll be $3 million. And then I'll move it to 3.5. And typically when I get in the last three to four months out of the year, I'll move my account to a $5 million account. And that's when I'm the most aggressive. Why? Why am I the most aggressive in the last three to four months out of the year? Because I've spent all year building up a profit cushion. And this profit base gives me greater confidence to trade bigger, to trade more aggressively. It 
I've eliminated the possibility of any losses hitting my original capital. And this is what I actually encourage my traders to do with their week. I teach them to, to handle their week the same way I handle my year, as an example. Let me give you an example. At the start of every week, like we are here today on Tuesday, this is starting our week. I tell them to be very cautious that I know that we've had, as a matter of fact, why don't I just do this with you live? Let's do it now. Let's, let's, let's start talking to my traders here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, traders. Good morning. How are you? What's going on here, traders? How are you? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back from your four day weekend. I know many of you hate four day weekends like I do. <laughs> we hate the weekends enough. We've had a, a four day weekend. Or I should say a three day weekend. It depends on how you look at it. But anyway, we are raring to go. I hope you're all ready to start another dynamic week of trading. Now, guys, as you know, at the start of every week, I give you the same speech over and over again, that I know many of you want to come out of the blocks as aggressively as you, as, as, as you can because you've been pent up all weekend waiting for the start of another dynamic trading week, but you have to resist that urge, traders. Why? Because Mondays, well, today is not Monday. It's normally Mondays. Today, the start of our week is Tuesday, but the start of every week must start off conservatively. Why? because you want to build a profit base throughout the week and gradually become more and more aggressive as your profits grow throughout the week. You don't want to run the risk of starting your week off with a huge, big blow to your account. What this does is it affects you psychologically. You start off on the wrong foot. The second thing it does is it puts you on the defensive for the rest of the entire week. So if you've only got $600 to lose for the entire week, traders, and you lose 300 of it, half of your weekly allowance in the first day, on the first morning of the first day, you will be put in a position to trade defensively, to trade in almost a fear-based state for the rest of the week. I don't want you doing that. You must trade conservatively on Monday to ensure that if you're losing, you're losing small. You want to gradually build a profit base on Monday. You want to take that activity into Tuesday, or in this case, we're going to do the conservative approach on Tuesday, build some... Pro profits under us on Tuesday, move that profit building into Wednesday. And if you've got a nice, solid profit base on the first two days, you can start picking up your size. You can start becoming a little more aggressive with your play selection because you have a profit base that is now protecting the original capital you started the week with. The most important law of all in this game is don't lose original capital. If you're going to lose, lose profits. But do your very best to refrain from losing your starting capital. So every week you have a starting capital amount. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't come out of the blocks and have a losing trade at first, but you want to be trading conservatively where any losing trades will not be debilitating losses that put you on the defensive. Do you understand this, traders? I need a few of you right now to let me know that you fully understand what I'm saying. This is very important. Now, guys, I teach you to do this with your weeks the same way I do with my year. I withdraw profits out of my trading account once every year. Most of you know that. I bring myself back to baseline, which I think is an important thing to do. I think that I've sidestepped being blown up like many other great traders have that I've known throughout the past because I've always done this. I've always brought myself back to baseline. These traders never brought themselves back to baseline and they blew up eventually. 
all right? I bring myself back to baseline. What is that? I take all the profits out and I go back to square one. This going back to square one is very much like your stock going back to its 20 period moving average. See, you as a trader can get too far away from your 20 period moving average the same way a stock can. And you can neutralize having to crash back to your 20 period moving average simply by withdrawing the profits and going back to baseline. And so therefore you sidestep the necessity to be brought back by force to the baseline by bad trading. Now, my baseline, I usually start my baseline in the, in the beginning of the year at a certain amount and I build profitability month by month throughout the year. And as the year progresses and my profit base increases, I start to get more aggressive and more aggressive and more aggressive. And in the last three to four months of the year, I'm at my most aggressive. Now, for those of you who have been with me for more than a year, you've seen this cycle. Those of you who have been with me for many years, you've seen this cycle in my trading over and over and over again. So some people at some times might say, well, why has Oliver all of a sudden started trading much smaller then I've seen him trading over the last several months. Well, that's because I've wiped my account out of its profits. I've gone back to baseline. Now I'm trading conservatively to build up my profit base. And I will do this in cycles. Now, in all honesty, this last this year, 2020, I did not take my profits until just a couple of weeks ago because I wanted to leave all the profits in because as all of you know, I was calling for a big giant market decline that I wanted all of my capital to take advantage of. And boom, we got that. We got that crash in the markets. It was very, very lucrative for all of us, for you two as well. Awesome. All right. And that sort of period is over. So I finally just wipe the account out of all the profits and I've gone back to trading a little bit more conservatively than I was over the past several months. But this is what I want you to do on a week by week basis. I do it on an annual basis, but you're supposed to do it every single week of your trading life. So your my year is your week. All right, you got that? Make sense? All right. Okay, guys. Now, last thing I'll say before we, we've got a, a little less than four minutes to go before the open. Let me remind you that there's very little that we can prepare for. But we can do a few things. Now, that throws a lot of people. Oliver, what do you mean? Um, why can't we prepare? Because we can't prepare for what the first two-minute bar of our stock stocks what are they going to be? Are they going to be red bars? Are they going to be green bars? Um, we can't prepare for that. So there isn't a great deal of pre-market open preparation that we can do. Only a few things. Like first thing I want you to note is that we do have a strong, uh, we have a strong open in the markets in the form of a gap up occurring. So let me get some charts up here and show you if I can. All right. So we've got a strong up open and an indi strong indication that the market's going to open up very powerfully this morning in the form of a big gap. All right. Let's see if I can get this right here. Okay. All right, you should see. And what you'll see here is you'll see the Dow and the, the, the diamonds are indicated to open up six. So we're, we're taught six, the spies, six, almost seven, and the Qs, uh, almost four. So this is a huge gap open indication, the upside. And as you can see, for example, Apple is indicated to open up here. Um, four and a half dollars up from Friday's close. And a lot of things are doing that. So a couple things I want to bring your attention to. I want, I want us to keep an eye on Twitter this morning. The reason why I want to keep an eye on Twitter this morning is because 
Um, last I checked, that was Twitter was up against its 200 period moving average on the daily chart or near it, I should say. All right. And boom. Now we're indicated in Twitter to open here around 33, the mid 33s. Friday's closing price was here. So we're comfortably above all of the items from late Friday. But if I flip to the daily chart here, we're right up against that 200 period moving average on the daily. Now, I don't want that to make you lean one way or the other, long or short. I just want us watching the way Twitter acts in this 200 period moving average area off the two minute chart this morning. So that's something I just want us. So that's something I want us to focus on as we approach the open and we're about to pro we're about to open now. So I'm using Twitter as an example of letting you know some of the small things you can do to prepare for the open. But in reality, not much. We simply have to wait and watch traders. We have to wait and watch for what the first two to five minute bars are going to be on our already selected stocks. Let's get ready to go, traders. Boom! I love this game. I missed you, trading. I missed you. I missed you. I missed you. Okay, so we got most things gapping up. JD up nicely, strongly. Facebook, my Facebook traders. Baba, my Baba traders. Square, my Square traders. Everything's up across the board for the most part. Twitter. Up as well. Okay, as I mentioned, up near that daily 200. PayPal is up, but coming off of its highs a little bit here. That's interesting. Let's see what that does. I'm going short there, guys. I'm going to go short this PayPal and see what we've got here. I'm going to short the PayPal here. Hmm. I want you to keep an eye on that Twitter. I'm going to keep an eye on that Twitter. What else are we going to keep an eye on? JD looking strong here. JD looking strong, guys, all right, keep an eye on that. Got some decent movement going on here in the PayPal. I took a quick, guys, I took a quick uh, $650 out of that play. Anticipation entry into the um, bear elephant bar there. Um, guys, I tend to scalp these and 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 I know I, I tend to leave a lot on the on the table with these plays a lot of times, guys. I tend to leave a lot on the table because of my scalping tendency whenever I'm going against position. So despite the fact that this is a nice fat red bar, I am in positive territory. The market's very powerfully powerful to the upside. So I'm gonna bet more on just a very quick short-term move off the open, in and out, 
than trying to rock this thing for some major two, three thousand dollar gain. All right. Now, that's not terribly wrong to do if I'm if I've got position in my favor, meaning that this is under Friday's action, not above Friday's action. The market's really negative and PayPal's negative. Now you want to try not to scalp as much. You want to hold on and maybe milk that play for a little bit more. All right. So not bad. Couple minutes, 600, almost $700 in a couple of minutes. Most people some people throughout the world work all month for that. Some people work two months for that. That's why I love this game, guys. That's why I love this game. That's why I love this game. All right, traders, so there you have it. Um, this is what I do with my traders every single morning. I'm with my babies. I'm with my babies. So traders, what I will do is I will sit with them. I will continue to point things out. I will continue to trade. I'll, I'll, I'll do my very best to, to pick off 600 here, 1,000 there, 800 until I piece together something like a three or four thousand, six thousand dollar day. It depends on the day. It depends on the opportunity. Now, guys, as you can see, um, I got out of the PayPal a little early. It is following through on us. But uh, I told you, I gave you my reasonings for that. All right, give me just a second here, guys. So I'm going to get back to my traders, guys. I just wanted to give you a little insight into what we do every single morning. I also wanted to give you a little peek into my trading account. I want to give you a little peek into our training session. All right. These are my executions, and you saw, take place in the PayPal for that almost $700. Um, and uh, these were the orders, the last orders that were taken. These are the times that each one of those, tr those executions took place. And uh, not bad. But let me get back to my traders, and let me get back to making some money. I'm missing out, and it's your fault. All right, guys, look at that PayPal. Look at that thing, man. I messed up, huh? Messed up. Anybody, anybody take that with me, guys? Anybody take that, that with me? That, that PayPal? Who took that PayPal short with me? SQ, yeah, very similar on the X SQ, absolutely. Guys, so I'm gonna be watching how PayPal moves back up. Because this is a this is what would you call this amount of red, guys? What would you call this amount of red? Yeah, I'd say this is violent wall, right? So the odds of, of PayPal rallying all the way back up and breaking the highs, while it's not impossible, those are not great odds, right? So um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the bounce to the upside. Now, oftentimes, guys, what I do, this is not what I encourage you to do right now. I will get short now, early. You understand? That's just because I, I do better feeling, I feel the stock better when I'm in it. So I do a token amount now. Now here's what's interesting. This is not the time to be short because it's, we're already down. We want to see the bounce. But guess what? By going short, even when it's late, a little less than half, it's not quite 50%, a little less than half the time, I even make money on them because 50% of the time, almost 50% of the time, there is no bounce. So I'm already short at the, and this is not an ideal spot to be short. I'm short already, but that's a small amount. So less than 50, a little bit less than 50% of the time, I will make money on the little bit because the bounce never comes. 
Now, if the bounce comes, I'll start to really put the real size that I want on it. Now, who took the JD that I pointed out, guys? Or was my was my mic off then too? JD, JD, did anybody take the JD? Tyler, Tyler's in it, yes. Alina's in it. Vincent, good, awesome. I love it. I'm really hoping that the PayPal bounces here though, guys. But we have to monitor the bounce because we don't want violence in the bounce. You understand? We don't want that. But we are down, getting down close to some support area. So we should be getting a bounce. We should be getting a bounce. But if not, I'm just gonna add some more to it. If we don't get the bounce, there to it see if it can come to me here boom all right not bad took things up to a thousand dollars on that little drop there guys Again, still scalping, guys, still scalping these things because I'm still, while I have color in my favor, um, I'm, it's still a powerful update and I'm, I'm in positive territory and it's near support. So I'm not going to give it a lot of room. Now, you can get around that by just instituting a trailing stop method. You don't have to be, well, should I, should, should I get out now? Should I do this now? Da, 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 uh, 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 I don't, you know, you don't have to be like that. You can just say, okay, look, I'm just going to bar by bar it and see what happens. Or I'm going to big bar stop it. I'm going to trail it with the big bars. So actually, I think that's always the best way to uh to do these things you know here are those executions again boom gotta love it not bad close to a thousand dollars in 10 minutes of trading all right thousand dollars 10 minutes i'll take that what if you could build your day a thousand dollars an hour? Who would like that? I'm just curious. Thousand dollars an hour. You like that? Would that be okay? <laughs> I just did it in 10 minutes, but okay. Do you think that's possible? I mean, you see me do it, right? Do you, do you, do you think that's possible? A little bit less than a thousand. Do you think a thousand dollars an hour is possible? Of course it is. That's baby money, traders. It's baby money. All right. I do way more than that um, in minutes, right? So the reason why I say an hour is because I know you're not trading with the size that I'm trading. Now, let's say you've got a $50,000 account, right? Let's say you got a $50,000 account. You can't go for $1,000 an hour or $50,000. So we have to take that in perspective. So what should you be going for? This is, a, this is a good conversation. What should you be going for on average per day with a $50,000 account? I'm going to tell you. All right, it's going to surprise you. It's going to surprise you. 
No, 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 no. 60 to $150. That's your range. 60 to $150. Surprise, surprise, surprise. If you are trying to push a $50,000 account to do 800, 600, you're going to have trouble. This is going to add an extra heap of problems onto your trading. Do you understand that? Because you are pressing, you are forcing an account that's not supposed to go there to try to go there. You're stretching it beyond its normal limits. You play in account traders within the confines of what it's easily able to do, not what it has to work really hard to do. Do you understand? So even though it's possible to make $800 with $50,000, but can you do it every day? No, you need to live where you can do it every single day of your life. That's your home, that's your house, that's where you reside, that's where you make your living. And it's not about making your living now at 50,000, it's about getting beyond the $50,000 level to one of the levels where you can live your life. Do you understand what I'm saying, traders? Does this make sense? All right. So I don't want you pressing your account too far. You get your 130, 180, $90 day. Boom. Now take it easy. Practice. Don't, don't ruin that. Practice. Get a practice account. If that money is a concern, do a practice pen to paper system. You know how to practice on paper? You pick a play just like this or on your screen, you pick a play and you say, look, I'm going to buy above this high right here. Just like that. Boom. But I suggest you keep track of your practices just like you would if it were real. Don't do them randomly. Keep a practice journal too. And this will make it more real.